and Ted, and possibly Ted. It pertains to XT4 also. We've got some Butterfest people at least. There's two of them, and they're almost in line with each, with each other. Yeah. You mean Christoph hasn't found the bar? <laughs> He's probably found the bar somewhere. Oh well. A anyway, there's uh, an extent pro a problem with extent-based file systems that I came across first with uh, cache files, but appears to be uh, more widespread than I first thought. So the problem itself is relatively straightforward. Uh, so if you have two extents with a, gap a small gap between, pointing to some data, uh, an extent-based file system such as ext4, xfs, or butterfs can uh, fill in the gap for you like that. So it, by using a bit more disk space and putting it full of zeros, it can reduce the extent, extent list from one extent from three extents to one extent, and make, so make for a smaller extent list. So basically, it inserts a bridging block of zeros. And the second extent problem, second problem is the converse of that, where the optimizer looks at the data and sees there's a huge block of zeros in the middle, and thinks it can free up some disk space by getting the zeros and splitting the extents. The problem, but there are problems with that. So things like BMAP, FireMap, SeekCo and SeekData can give you, give you false positives and false negatives because the data can change, the, the extent list can change under you at any time. With the XT4, if I remember rightly, there's a flag you can turn on, uh, a syscall or something you can turn on to make this happen. But also uh, defragmentation tools or FSIC can do this, so you can't rely on the data from those. So in cache files, I was using a hole in the file system, and I'm still using a hole in the file system to indicate there's some data I haven't fetched from the server yet. Uh, I've look, been looking at content encryption, where a hole is used to mean this block doesn't exist, you can assume it decrypts, it's equivalent to decrypting to zeros. It's an optimization because otherwise you have to fully, if you want to store a block in an encrypted file way out over there, you have to fill everything in between that. Otherwise you can end up with encrypted data. This only appeared to, to affect cache files, but it looks like it can also, the, this information can be accessed remotely by NFS and Ceph, possibly CIFs, who's not here to ask. And <clears throat> if we're building uh, content encryption on top of that, using holes to indicate blocks we don't have, then this could be a problem there as well. Now there's FScript in uh, ext4, but I think that's not a problem because ext4 does doesn't allow you to do hole bridging and extent filling if the file's encrypted. I think that's yeah, that's it. correct. Yeah, so to mitigate the problem, is it possible for us to ask the, the backing file system not to do that for our purposes because the file is content encrypted? I mean, it seems like this is a philosophical question, right? Yeah. I, I well, think... Uh, to some extent, sure. yeah. Yeah, I mean... I, many file systems have considered sparse to just simply be an optimization. Yeah. And so therefore, whether uh, ch uh, 
chunk of file that contains all zeros is expressed as a gap in the extent tree or just simply unallocated blocks in an indirect block map or by allocated blocks that are then zeroed, maybe because you're also trying to avoid uh, uh, free space fragmentation uh, if you know the file is going to eventually be filled or you have cause to believe that. Um, I don't believe, I mean, I think C-Cole is something that is used just to, again, optimize a copy, but it isn't, it is, is not considered uh, data, right? Uh, the, Indeed, and, the, yes. and the conflict is if you have <coughs> applications that are expecting that the C-Cole seek data, um, you know, information is actually information as opposed to how things happen to be allocated at the moment uh, and are depending on that because that's yep. what FS cache is doing. Well, and also content encryption, but yeah. Yeah, well, the thing is, is that if you're doing encryption, uh, presumably the encryption layer knows about that and can just simply suppress that, right? Mm. Uh, if you encrypt file systems, you tend to use a Galois counter or other type of cipher that means you're blind to the holes anyway. That's the whole point of using XTS or GCM ciphers. If you're not doing that, you're doing encryption on files wrong. Adjustments well, that's, that's how FS script. Uh, do, this is how FScript does it. It, it uh, encrypts each block based on the block number and file I note. Right, that's it doesn't store any metadata. The problem is you can have a block that when you encrypt it ends up all zeros. And can we take, that can be thrown away. But the, also the file system can insert a block of zeros which you then say, ah, oh, there's a block there, I'll decrypt it, and you get some rubbish out of it. I think a block that encrypts to all zeros is so theoretical we well, don't yeah, need to yeah. worry about it. The, 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 the false positive isn't really a problem. It's the f it's false, false positive is a problem here. Where you've got a block, it, it inserts a block of all zeros. You don't know that that isn't a valid block. So you try and decrypt it and you get rubbish. And the, unless we can stop it inserting the bridging block. So that's... I am not aware of any file encryption system that, you know, either file encryption systems are either integrated into the file system a la FScript, yeah. in which case they deal with it, or if it's external to the file system and it's a sparse file, um, you know, they don't write sparse files because if you write yeah. a sparse file, um, C colon and seek data is a relatively new interface. I'm not aware of a user space content encryption that, dep you know, that wants to write a, a sparse file and relies on C -col seek data to find out whether or not there was never any data written to that particular area yeah. of the disk. I agree that that is a theoretical possibility, but it should also be remembered that not all file systems even support C -col and seek data, True, yes. and therefore user space tends not to use that to try to store semantic meaning. Yeah. And it is, it's just what I'm trying to do is avoid re-implementing re an FS on top of the FS to store I've got this block or not got this block. Okay, hold on guys, Leighton yeah. wants to say something. So yeah, I mean, um, if you, um, so the first thing is that we only really need the, the granularity of, of a FS script block, right? So. Uh, if we can guarantee that we can get, like I'm using 4K blocks in, in Ceph, <clears throat> and if we can guarantee that we can get at least 4K granularity out of the backend store, then we're fine, right? Um, and then, you know, also, I mean, the other problem too with, a, with an all zeros block is that you don't know that until you read the whole thing in, in memcomb it, right? So, I mean, there's no way to know. It could be mostly zeros until you could still, you know, some little bit at the end, right? Uh, yeah, anyway, that's all I got. Okay, I, I think this is like not a, problem because ecryptfs and but which butterfs uses ecryptfs like the anything that we zero will be in a page that's being allocated in a block that's being written and then that will be encrypted if there is a literal hole that just there's no extent for it so there's nothing like you're not going to read it back and we don't do this like optimistic filling we don't I, I, does the xt4 do this it does. oh okay no well, then and XFS does, apparently. Okay, FS doesn't do this, so we don't care. Right. What if 
What do you think? The, the XTR, um, oh, sorry. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, when you, uh, or, go ahead, Jeff. Oh, I was just saying that um, I, I can't, I mean, I lost my train of thought because I had something I was going to say, but never mind, go ahead. So my question, if, if you had like a, a larger uh, block, like, a, like the erasure block or mm -hmm. IO block, yeah. you, you could query uh, the file system, what is your optimization uh, block? And you would know, for example, that one megabyte gaps are not filled, right? Yeah, and you I'll could rely on one megabyte holes. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know that I can rely on that. <laughs> I, I if you could, if you could, would, it, would well, that? If be... I could, I could encrypt at that block, that block size. Okay. But so I, I don't know whether I can because that's a function of VXD4 and uh, XFS. Look. Yeah. Ted can answer this question, but I think the reason for optimizing extents is keeping a smaller uh, B3. And well, yeah, yeah. consecutive uh, yeah. blocks. So I don't think that filling out one megabyte holes is an issue. Yeah, I, I think, again, ultimately the question is whether a file system is obligated oh, to yeah, maintain a semantic difference between a you know, sparse file uh, where there's a gap in the, in the file versus a block that's written by all zeros. Um, I was actually yeah. trying to look because as I recall, I'm not even sure that like if someone uses the zero range um, uh, F allocate operation, uh, I think it says that it's preferred that you write all zeros. It's not clear to me whether it's invalid to actually deallocate um, to get the effect of write zero, uh, uh, F, F allocate right. zero range. <clears throat> I'd have to go and look because I, I don't remember that. But again, I, uh, historically, there hasn't been considered to be a different. I could imagine that file systems could agree to implement a flag that says, don't do this thing because the underlying user, the user of that file actually wants to assign semantic difference to that's blocks cool. not allocated versus blocks are allocated and contains all zeros. Um, but at the moment, it happens to be the case that ext4 and XFS are the only ones pursuing this particular optimization. Uh, and you know, the basic rationale behind that was uh, if you're going to be writing, um, say, you know, 32k of zeros on a hard drive. Uh, that's actually faster than to have to seek around and mess around with the extent tree. So why not just do that? Um, but we could implement a flag that says don't do this optimization, but that actually doesn't completely solve the problem unless we also effectively prohibit all file systems from doing this optimization, you know, without implementing this flag that says, you know, I promise not to do the optimization. Right. Uh, Jeffrey on the virtual call has comments. Go ahead. Yeah, <clears throat> so uh, several years ago, we had uh, You muted yourself again, man. We had you in the beginning. Sorry. Um, so several years ago, we had a series of bug reports filed against uh, AFS from CERN regarding applications that they wrote for um, that leverage parallel I.O. systems. And these systems uh, essentially protect uh, access to different portions, use a common file, uh, potentially two petabytes in size, um, where they allocate the file sparsely and they actually rely upon reading where the holes are in the file from their applications to figure out where their records end and begin. Um, one of the problems that they had reported to us is that, you know, a hole they left that was 12 bytes in size would suddenly disappear out from underneath them, corrupting their data. Um, clearly, you know, we, we pointed out that they were relying upon behavior that was not guaranteed, um, but 
uh, they, there certainly are, are user land applications unrelated to encryption that, are, that want this behavior to go away. I mean, it sounds like a, not a, it sounds like something that would be reasonable to turn off per file. Like, I mean, like how we have no compress and stuff like that. So. Right, so uh, with ext4 today, there is a tunable where you can actually say what's the maximum size where we will actually bridge the gap with allocated blocks that are all zeroed. Um, and the default happens to be, uh, I think it's eight file system blocks. Um, and so the workaround uh, that I told David about was, well, you could just simply set the tunable to zero, and that solves the problem on a per-file system basis. I think a file flag is probably more appropriate uh, so that it's now on a per-file basis as opposed to a per-file system basis. Um, I don't have an objection to doing that. Modulo finding a free bit in the chatter bit namespace that isn't being used by somebody else um, but uh, sure, right? I, I, you know, I can't speak for the XFS folks if they would be willing to implement a similar feature. Um, and I note that this is the sort of thing which is best if all of the file systems that do this optimization agree on the same uh, flag to turn it off. <laughs> do we have any of the XFS guys on the, no, Eric failed. So, I mean, like, I would like to do a similar op optimization for ButterFS, at least for, like, bridging. Um, so, I mean, I would be fine, I, you know. Yeah, I, I don't have a great picture in my head for how often these, you know, bridgeable holes actually happen. I think the most compelling use case I can think of is people shoving down uh, hole punches on VM images where, like, a 4K hole punch isn't that useful for us to do internally. It just actually makes it much worse but we could still send the discard down to the device and just now punch the hole, something like that. Uh, one of the reasons why we were doing this was at the time, libbfd, which is used by bin utils, had this really bad habit of writing files randomly that would eventually become sequential, but they would leave these weird 4K gaps that would then later get filled. And the optimization made sense if you were doing you know, some silly uh, benchmark-like kernel compilation. I think he still does that. <clears throat> um, just wanted to point out, we got to an API that there is already an API in XFS. The same API being used to set the project ID. Can be, can be used to set extent size hint and cow extent size hint. It's not exactly the same, uh, the same thing, but it's a similar uh, thing. I don't know if it can be used or shared or extended or whatever. Yeah, I really need Christoph in the room for this. Well, that's all I've got for this. Anything else? Jan. Yeah, I, th I think Christoph was a great Hold on, Jan is absence. trying to talk and he's muted himself. Just uh. Go ahead, you're good now. Yeah, hello? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so uh, the API Amera has been speaking about is like IOCTL called like set extended attribute or something like that. Uh, and yeah, yeah, there are definitely like flag flags which are available there. So like if we don't have standard flags with change editor, then we could uh, we could use this call actually to, to set the flag. I believe we already like set project IDs as, as Summer said, and like the project ID inheritance via this API already. So like there's already some precedent both in ext4 and XFS for setting inode flags with this API. So that should be definitely doable. Perfect. Good, David? I'm not sure if I entirely understood what he said. The, that there's the interface that Amir is talking about could definitely be used for this. Right. If we don't have yeah, this is an XFS. Yeah, an XFS. But that's only if we don't have space in the which I think we do. We gotta have more. Yeah. Right. It sounds doable. Excellent. Okay. Well, 
All right, Thank guys. You. Thank you very much. I think that's it for the file system track. We're going to wander off and uh, get drunk. We will be back for the evening wrap-up and lightning talks. So um, people on the call, you can uh, you wander off for what, three hours and seven minutes, I think. Let me wait. Let me look before I say that for real. Five o'clock. So yeah, three hours and seven minutes when we're back. And it's the uh, lightning talks and the little wrap up. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>